Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. Myself, Dr. P. Ajita, Professor, School of Computing, Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology, Chennai. Now, I am here to give you a lecture on one of the minimum spanning tree algorithm, Kriskal's algorithm. So, before going to that algorithm, let us see some of the basic terms. First, what is graph? Graph is a collection of nodes and edges. So, graph can be represented as capital G is equal to capital V, comma capital E, where V represents set of nodes and E represents set of edges. So, here I have shown two types of graph. One is directed, another one is undirected. Directed graph means the edges will be having arc. Undirected, the edges, they won't have any arc. The next term is spanning tree. So, any tree consisting of edges in the graph and including all the vertices are called a spanning tree. So, here I have given a graph which is having three nodes A, B, C and three edges A, C, C, B and A, B. So, the graph has been represented as G is equal to capital V comma E. So, from this graph I am going to construct spanning tree. Spanning tree can be called as G dash. It is nothing but it is V dash and E dash where E dash is same as V same number of nodes you will be having in our spanning tree. But the number of edges will be number of nodes minus 1. So, here the number of node is 3. So, my minimum spanning tree should have only 2 edges because n is 3. So, 3 minus 1 is 2. So, a graph can have maximum n power n minus 2 spanning tree. So, n represent your number of nodes. Since the value of n in the graph is 3, 3 power 3 minus 2, 3 power 1. So, totally I can construct 3 spanning tree from the given graph. Okay. So, the next one is what is minimum spanning tree? So, a spanning tree can be called as minimum spanning tree if the overall edge cost is minimum. Okay. So, the main application of the spanning tree is it is used in computer network routing protocol, civil network planning. In simple way, I can tell the application of this. If you are having n number of cities, if you want to visit all the cities with minimum cost, you can go for minimum spanning tree algorithm. So, under minimum spanning tree algorithm, we are having three algorithms. In today's session, we are going to see about Kruskal's algorithm. Okay. So, here we are having a graph. So, this graph can be called as network. When a graph can be called as network is if the edges are having some values. So, the values can be distance or it can be cost. So, now this graph can be called as network. So, now I am going to construct minimum spanning tree for this graph using Kruskal's algorithm. So, this Kruskal's algorithm, it is using greedy approach. What do you mean by greedy approach? At every stage, it try to find out the minimum cost edge and build the minimum spanning tree. Okay. Now, we will see what are the various steps we have to follow in order to construct the minimum spanning tree. So, the first step is a network has been given. So, what we have to identify is first we have to construct a queue. Okay. So, the queue value should be all the edge values in ascending order. Okay. So, here the edge value is 10, 26, 22, 12, 18, 24. So, these are the edge values. So, first what we have to do is from the network identify the edge values arrange the edge values in ascending order and place it in your queue data structure. This is our first step to construct the minimum spanning tree. The next step is we have to create sets. The number of sets you are going to create, it depends on number of nodes we are having. So, in our network, we are having totally 7 nodes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, since we are having 7 nodes, I have to create 7 set. The values in the set initially it will be the node value. Take for example, S1 set is having node value 1, S2 set is having node value 2. Like that S3, S4, S5, S6, S7. So, the second step is we are creating n sets. Okay. Now, we will go for the third step. Okay. So, third step is we have to construct a T matrix. So, these are the steps we have to follow in order to construct the T matrix. So, we will see with the example then it will be very clear for everyone. Okay. So, first initially we had the queue. 
So, this Q is having all the edge cost in ascending order, ok. Then we have created the sets. The number of sets, it depends on number of nodes. So, here totally I am having 7 nodes. So, 7 sets we have created. The third step is to construct the T matrix. So, now we have to identify how many rows we want to have in the T matrix. That is what we have to do in the third step. So, the number of rows, it depends on number of nodes. Suppose if you are having n nodes, n minus 1 rows will be there in the T matrix. Okay. So, here since the number of nodes are 7, my T matrix will have 6 rows and number of columns 2. That is to connect the nodes. We are having 2 columns that can be represented as U, V. Okay. So, in the third step, first what we have to do is we have to identify the rows and columns for the T matrix. Number of rows depends on number of nodes. Since number of nodes 7, 7 minus 1, 6 rows we are having and 2 columns to represent the edge that can be represented as u comma v. The first step here is we have to take the edge cast 10. After taking the edge cast 10, find out the node associated with 10. The node associated with 10 is 1 and 6 that can be called as u and v. Now I have to check u and v are in same set or different set. Take for example, u is 1, 1 is present in set S1, 6 is present in set S6. They are present in different sets. That is, u and v are present in different sets. If they are present in different sets, what we have to do is enter that u and v in the T matrix, 1 comma 6. After entering it in the T matrix, what we have to do is merge 1 and 6, that is set S1 and S6 and create a new set called S8. So, now in my sets, I am totally having 8 sets, ok. Same iteration I have to repeat, ok. So, in the next iteration, I have to take 12, ok. So, 12, now find out the nodes associated with 12. So, the nodes associated with 12 is 3 comma 4. Now, I have to check 3 and 4 are in same set or different set. 3 is present in set S3, 4 is present in set S4. Since they are in different sets, if they are in different sets, enter 3 and 4 in the T matrix, that is the second entry. After entering in the T matrix, I have to merge both the sets where S3 and S4 I have to merge and I am creating a new set called S9. So, this procedure we have to follow if U and V are in different sets. Now, the next one is 14, ok. So, now find out the node associated with 14. The node associated with 14 is 2 and 7, ok. Now, check 2 and 7 are in same set or different set. 2 is present in set S2, 7 is present in set S7. Since they are in different sets, I can place them in the T matrix 2 comma 7. After placing that, merge both the sets. S2 and S7 and create a new set called S10. So, the value of S10 is 2 comma 7. So, the next value is 16, ok. So, now find out the node associated with 16. The node associated with 16 is 2 and 3. Now, check 2 and 3 are in same set or different set. So, 2 is present in set S10. Always we have to refer the latest set, ok. 2 is present in S10 and 3 is present in S9. Since they are in different sets, if they are in different sets, place them in your T matrix. After placing them in T matrix, merge these two sets so that you will be having the new set S11 as 2, 3, 4, 7, ok. So, next I have to take 18. So, 18 is the next value in my queue. So, 18, find out the node associated with 18 node associated with 18 is 4 and 7. Now, check 4 and 7 are in same set or different set. If you see in your set, 4 and 7 are in the set S11. If they are present in the same set, we should not include in the T matrix. The reason is they may form a cycle, ok. Since they will form a cycle, we should not enter 7 and 4, we should not enter in the matrix because they are present in the same set. Okay, now take the 
next 22 okay now 22 node associated with 22 is 4 and 5 so 4 and 5 they are in same set or different set so 4 is present in s11 and 5 is present in s5 since they are in different sets i can place them in the t matrix 4 comma 5 after placing in the t matrix i can merge s11 and s5 so that i will be getting a new set called s12 with 2 3 4 5 7 next i am going to take 24 so 24 the node associated with 24 is 5 and 7 so i have to check 5 and 7 are in same set or different set so 5 and 7 if you see here they are present in the same set if they are present in the same set they may form a cycle so we should not include them in the t matrix we can go for the next iteration okay take the next value 26 now 26 if we take the node associated with 26 is 6 and 5 okay now i have to check 6 and 5 are in same set or different set so if i find 5 5 is present in s12 and 6 is present in s8 always latest is set only we have to refer for u and v value since they are in different sets what i can do is i can place the values in the t matrix u and v 5 comma 6 after placing that now i can merge s12 and s8 so that i'll be getting the new set s13 so the next one is 28 so 28 the node associated with 28 is 1 and 2 so 1 and 2 are in the same set since they are in the same set no they may form the cycle now our q is empty as well as we got the t matrix so these are the edges we have to consider to construct the minimum spanning tree okay so this t matrix will act as input for constructing your t your minimum spanning tree so take 1 comma 6 connect 1 comma 6 3 comma 4 connect 3 comma 4 2 comma 7 connect 2 comma 7 4 comma 5 connect 4 comma 5 and 5 comma 6 if you connect finally you will be getting your minimum spanning tree okay so this is the minimum spanning tree we are getting all the nodes gets connected so that i can start from the node 1 then i can visit 6 then i'll be visiting 5 then i'll be visiting 4 3 2 7 so this is one way where i can visit all the nodes with minimum cost the other way you want to visit means you can start from 7 2 3 4 5 6 1 so your minimum spanning tree it is having all the nodes as well as the number of edges will be n minus 1 if you see the edge number of edges 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay so this is your minimum spanning tree so the main application of minimum spanning tree is if you want to visit all the cities present in your network with minimum cost you can go for minimum spanning tree algorithm okay so just we'll see an overview about the algorithm the first step is we have to construct the queue with the edge cost in ascending order okay this is the algorithm for crystals okay minimum spanning tree so e represent edge and cost represent the cost matrix n represent number of nodes and t represent the t matrix okay the first step we are doing is we are constructing the queue with the edge cost in ascending order i represent the row of our t matrix initially i equal to 0 as well as we are going to find out the total minimum cost so i am initializing the total minimum cost as 0 okay so we are repeating a procedure until your q is not empty as well as i less than n minus 1 so if this condition is satisfied means we are repeating the procedure so the procedure for repetition is first we are taking the q value edge value from the q then we are finding the node associated with that edge the node associated will be u comma v find u and v are in different sets if they are in different sets i have to enter that u and v in the t matrix that is why i am incrementing the row of my t matrix i previously it was 0 now it becomes 1 so 1 comma 1 will be your u value 1 1 comma 2 will be your v value so that edge cost i have to include in my minimum cost 
previous minimum cost is 0 and whatever cost we are having between 1 and 6 that is 10 will be added. After that I am going to merge both the sets ok that is for that we are using union operation. So, this process will repeated until i less than n minus 1 and q is not empty ok. So, after finishing that I have to check if i is not n minus 1 that is what the number of edges should be n minus 1. If i is not n minus 1 means we will not get the spanning tree otherwise we will be getting the spanning tree where I can return the cost minimum cost to visit all the nodes ok. So, that is about your Kruskal's algorithm ok. Thank you.